I'm Jeremy Petuto. Uh, I work with Gramercy Tech, and we do cool stuff with computers. Um, I don't have a clicker, so I'll take one here. Um, I'm here to kind of talk about why AR and activations. By the way, that whole thing about phones, I totally agree with that um, you know, AR is bigger than just a phone. Um, but AR is really cool, and it's the future, and it's here. Um, AR, why do we do it? AR augments the experience that we have, as we all know. Um, it increases dwell time by a very significant effect um, in commercial applications. And then it's also really cool and fun, um, which you shouldn't discount that much. So the first thing I just want to show is AR doesn't have to be on the phone. Um, that is just a projection mapping on a wall right there. And then we just hit a little temperature sensor in there. So when you blow into it, it triggers a projection map. Um, if that was just a touch screen, no one would touch it. No one would play with that if that was just sitting there like that. But because it's actually like a touch physical object, people will play with it. Um, another example is uh, Lumo Play. I don't know if you guys ever played with Lumo Play. Lumo Play is a really cool application. And what it does is it takes cameras and basically turns um, objects into a mouse click that you can then layer onto walls. Um, so this is a game. It's called Throw Yo. You take the ball, you throw it at a wall, uh, and it acts as a mouse click. So that game would be really, really, really boring if you just walked up and played a, a touch game. But because you have that ball, and you're throwing it there, and you have that prop, there's a two-hour wait to play that stupid game. Um, so, but don't discount that, because it's fun, it's novel, and people like to play with it. Um, but everyone has a phone, so you can't discount the phones, right? So one of the things that we found in, that in really augments the experience is in museums. So at the Museum of the Dog, um, we actually built, which I know is a real thing, um, American Kennel Club has tons and tons of pictures of dogs. Uh, but they didn't have a lot of space that was out there to hang, when they, so that when they hung these paintings, they couldn't really tell a lot about the story about the paintings that were in there. So we took real world scans of the objects. Um, and there was way too many pictures of dogs in my office. Um, and then what we did was individually cut out each uh, breed that was there to augment the experience. So someone could walk up, scan it, and then they were able to kind of click on, click on it, figure out what kind of dog that was up there, and then look at the other paintings that were in there. Um, another cool thing that we did for the Museum of the Dog was to take augmented reality and kind of bring it to life for children. Um, and this significantly increased the dwell time at the museum. The museum is smaller. It's like two of these rooms. It's a very small museum. You can whip through it in 20 minutes, right? But what we did was we took Artie, who is that really cute puppy up there, um, and brought him to life for children. So when they would walk into the museum, they were given a task on their smartphone. Uh, they would walk around, and, they, and Artie would go, you know, arf, arf, my, my uncle's up, on the, up over there in that painting. You should go find him. And then kids would go over, scan the painting, and then Artie would be like, great job. You found my uncle. Um, and the funny, really funny thing is it's really sticky, really fun. Kids come in, they go, and they do it. And then it, it really increased the playtime from like 20 minutes to kind of walk through, through this little thing to about 45 minutes on average for kids to go in. Um, but why is it not used? Um, most of the time you need an app or a very controlled environment, which sucks, right? Um, and it's, because of that, it's not scalable. But as was, for the first time that was alluded today, there is WebAR, which no one really talked about here, um, except for the gentleman before me. But WebAR really has made, for marketers and consumers and everyone, made it a lot simpler to kind of put their branding experiences out there. Um, the famous one was Spider-Man. I don't know if you guys saw that last year. Uh, for the Into the Spider-Verse, you could literally pop open your smartphone, hit a button, and then Spider-Man would play with you. Um, Coors, uh, Miller Lite, right? Uh, they made a, you would go to a website on their main, you know, on their main panel scan the can, and then this leprechaun would jump out and play with you. Um, 
And yes, it seems really silly, but they got hundreds and thousands of hits on this thing. And then Toyota Corolla allowed you to actually put a physical car in your living room at scale, which is just kind of crazy. Um, so what, what our experience with this was, um, Ally Bank uh, had purchased the rights to Mr. Monopoly. And they wanted to do a, basically a scavenger hunt in six cities with 36 squares, and basically to have people in these cities do a virtual scavenger hunt to collect Monopoly pieces that were in there. Um, it was really, really successful, and because ba basically people were able to kind of go up and walk around very naturally, scan one of those little AR markers that were up there, and then Mr. Monopoly would pop up or drive up in a car, and then you would get points, and then real cash. That was the crazy thing about it. People got paid right then and there, $200, after they signed up their email address, and then there was Venmo to them like that afternoon. So it really, really worked. What was the benefits of that was, it was like only after like a week, 100,000 plays in these six cities, and it wasn't like there were brand ambassadors being like, hey, come here, play this game. It was just naturally out there on the street, and people were just finding it, discovering it, and playing with it. Um, the other thing that was really cool was, very simple, the program and change. iOS 13 came out like the week before this, and I don't know if you guys are developers, but anytime they update iOS, it just breaks everything. So we were able, with dark mode, killed everything, by the way, and so we were able to fix it basically that afternoon. Because it was a web AR, it wasn't an app, people didn't have to download it, and no one wants to download apps anyway. And then it was super sticky. If we got you to go and play with this game, and you were able to go and put your email address in, which not, a, not everybody did, but if they did do it, 86% of people played the game to completion. So that means 86% of people walked around, scanned the thing, put in their, you know, after they put in their email address, and then went around the city to find the other five markers, which is just absurd, but it works. So people like it, they have a lot of fun with it. Um, some challenges with it, just to kind of tell you guys about it. Um, 3D model size is, you know, over a 3G network is tough. And then image target differentiation, which I'll get to in a second. And then fraud prevention. The biggest, the simplest thing with fraud prevention was we just kind of, because we knew your um, location, we can basically just pop up and say, hey, you know, you're in Long, Long Island, you know, the game's in Manhattan, you know. Um, which happened a lot. Um, but then the model size was very, very hard to control. Um, poly count couldn't exceed 35,000 triangles, which sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Um, and then we had to make sure that the file size, because people were downloading this on 3G, was under 10 megs. So like every single model, we had to scoop out everything out from the inside of it. Uh, we couldn't do too much with shadows, and we had to be very, very smart with how we kind of rendered all this stuff. Um, and then the thing that I thought was the coolest thing, which is really, really freaked us out, um, was that we had to make 36 of these markers. And if you notice up there, you know, they're all very different, but Monopoly pieces look the same. So there's a rectangle and a rectangle and then some text that is in there. So every time we would scan that with that in there, it would, rec it would think that St. Charlie's Place was you know, St. James Place every single time. So after a couple late nights um, and maybe a couple glasses of wine, I figured out that, <laughs> and no one thought this would work, but I was like, let's just take out the, the, let's just take out the Monopoly piece um, itself from the thing, and miraculously it worked. And, um, I'm allowed to sit, talk about it now, but at the time, the agency was like, don't ever tell anyone that we did that. But um, it worked very, very well. And that was like one of the weird trick things about these AR markers is that, um, you know, even if it's different and it looks different, the, the AI logic on that is going to grab to the simple marker. So it always was grabbing to the little purple up there above St. Charlie's Place. Anyway, it was super successful, super fun. And people dig it, because everyone has it in their phone. Everyone can stumble up against it. And this is the kind of things that are out there now um, and do work. So well, again, why? They augment the experience. 
It increases dwell time. It's very, very sticky. And it's cool and fun. So anyway, I tried to be fast because you guys want to go to the bathroom. But um, <laughs> anyway, I'm with Jeremy. I'm with Gramercy Tech. Happy to, we do a lot of this stuff. Happy to talk. And uh, thanks for having me. Cheers. <laughs> thanks, Jeremy. Thank you.